those of you who watch this channel will know I quite like collecting English cameras, particularly post-war Ensign cameras. And there's a range of Ensign cameras called auto ranges, and they have coupled rangefinders in them. Now, I was looking online and I discovered that there was a pre-war auto range. And um, I bought one, um, which was in a slightly poor condition, and I will do a review on that model in the near future. But about a week later, um, I realised there was another auto range. I think this was slightly misdescribed and I managed to get it. It just said Ensign. I think if it had said auto range, it would have got a little bit more attention. But I bought this camera. I think I paid about £15, £20 pounds for it. And it arrived and it was in far better condition than the um, camera I had bought the week before. Um, it's a early... Um, it's a slightly earlier model, but you can see the lovely condition here. And in order to open the camera, we need to press this here. And then it needs a little bit of a helping hand to gently take it out. And then it clicks in. And put it on the side so we can see but the focusing is here well perhaps I will start with <coughs> how you load a film the mechanism is here to open the back you can't see it very well because of the handle there we are so you open the back here now the one slight issue with this camera it has got one very very slight issue so film goes in here across to there the material there slightly rubs against the viewfinder but never mind if that's all there is after um, this camera I think was made in about 1934-35 as I said it's a slightly earlier model let me slightly let me get get it closed again here right so what do we have we have a interesting camera here because here we have the range finder and it's coupled, um, sorry I'll come to this part here, it's here. The focusing is back and forth here. Now the earlier model of this camera has this wire frame here and although it has this lovely range finder here, the range finder doesn't act as a viewfinder. You have to pop this viewfinder up here and then you've got the viewfinder there and here okay now there is something even better about this camera so we have a range finder and it's coupled but you might have noticed this here and if you look at the bellows and I move this oh that's the shutter you will notice the bellows going up and down. And what the Dickings you th may be thinking is this. Well, it's something called a um, rising action. And it's so, if we've got verticals on the building, um, I mean, when we're taking a building from looking up, we can get what we call converging verticals. It's that perspective effect. And we might not want that. We might want the building to look straight. And that we can do on this camera because we have the what it's called riding movement there. And on the front we have um, a little button here which will do the horizontal movements. So we've got vertical movements and horizontal and this carriage will move over. Um, the lens on this isn't the greatest of lenses and the shutter is um, a spring shutter. Um, having said that, the camera I find is in really good condition. Um, I mean, normally you get some rising of the leather here. We haven't. We've also got a 45 degree angle here. So we have got a few finder. I forgot about this few finder. We do have a number of few finders. And this is particularly noticeable on the early model. We can tell this is an early model because of this few finder here and this wire frame here. It does um, 
hark back to previous cameras under the um, Enzyme were part of Hallinger and Butcher and they often use the name carbine and you get this as a carbine carbon auto car, carbine auto range and it's the first time we've actually seen the auto range name actually being used as I said after the war we see a lot of auto ranges but the film is still on the camera as you can see I'm about to develop it will I get any photos who knows Let's find out. So this is back in the village of Corf Castle and it was a quite a bright Sunday afternoon. The camera performed actually very well. I did have to increase the contrast a little bit. I think the lens is absolutely fine, but it is uncoated and it acted very much like an uncoated lens would. Um, and what I find with uncoated lens is, is you get a sort of flatness and a bit of a greyness. Um, this has some softness to it. I found that most of the images were very sharp, but um, not all of them. And remember, this camera is 85 years old at least. Uh, and as you can see here, the castle is quite sharp. Um, definition is fine. This camera actually performed moderately well the um the bellows are in very good condition i think what perhaps lets the camera down i think there's a bit of camera shake here as i said it's not the greatest of lenses but it's not a bad lens and in 1934 it would have been seen as quite a good lens and light rise there were better shutters around but so this is basically the model at the bottom end of a good camera if that makes sense you've got lots of good features on the camera like the coupled range finder and the last two images this is without the shift of movement and you can see that we've got this converging vertical here and then the second image this one coming up here now unfortunately there's a bit of camera shake there but you can see how the it's a lot straighter um, so a very interesting camera I look forward to doing another film in it at some point bye for now